For the first time in my entire life, I just finished watching a Japanese Godzilla movie. This one's called Godzilla Minus One, and it just might be the best Godzilla movie ever made. So let's talk about it. What's up, my dude? Your friendly neighborhood Tony here, and as I do with all my movie reviews, I'm going to give you a little bit of information about Godzilla Minus One, who made it, what it's about, all that good stuff. Then I'll go into the things I did and did not like about the movie, the pros and cons. And finally, I'll let you know who I think this movie is for if anyone. If that kind of thing sounds cool to you and you want to keep up to speed on all the new big movies that are coming out in theaters and on streaming, make sure you subscribe. All right, Godzilla Minus One takes place shortly after World War II. There we find Japan at its lowest point when a new crisis in the form of a giant monster emerges, baptized in the horrific power of the atomic bomb. The movie is written and directed by famed Japanese filmmaker Takashi Yamazaki. And if you're not familiar with the Godzilla franchise, this is the 37th Godzilla movie overall and the 33rd film produced by the Japanese company Toho. Now, like I said, I have never seen any of the other Japanese produced Godzilla Godzilla movies. Yeah, I know, I suck. But the truth is, I have seen every American Godzilla movie going all the way back to the 1998 one, which was a complete disaster of a movie. Although that P. Diddy song that they played during the credits was pretty dope. So yes, my experience with Godzilla is limited in some ways, but maybe that's a good thing. So is Godzilla minus one a good jumping off point for a Godzilla newbie like me? Well, let's get into the old pros and cons, starting of course with the pros. The first thing I have to touch on is the visual. This movie is gorgeous, and surprisingly so in some ways. For one, they use a lot of golden hour shots, which just always look appealing. There really is some stunning cinematography throughout the movie. And of course, as you might expect, the cinematographer on it is also wildly successful and has been around for a long time. I think at this point, he's won four Japanese Academy Awards. I also really dug the costumes and the set design. I mean, it is a Godzilla movie, so you know there's going to be a ton of destruction everywhere. Cities being turned to rubble, ships being smashed, and just generally a bunch of wreckage and ruins all over the place. And they did a phenomenal job with those sets. It really feels authentic and lived in, especially when you consider that the budget was, I mean, a tenth of what a lot of modern superhero and action movies spend. I honestly don't know how they managed to do all of what they did with just a $15 million budget. It just goes to show that these studios don't need to be spending 200 plus million dollars on every new Marvel movie that comes out. Another big standout for me was the score. Now again, I'm not super familiar with the OG Godzilla movies, but from what I understand, a lot of the music in Godzilla Minus One dates back to some of those original movies and their scores and themes and musical cues. And whether or not that is the case, I can say Say confidently that audio wise the movie crushes whether it's the subtle undertones or the bombastic orchestra or just even the sound effects of Godzilla's roar for example with all of that I would definitely recommend watching this movie in a theater with the best possible sound system another thing I really love here is the characters and the way they develop them throughout the movie I won't spoil anything about their stories but there are definitely some moments for the main characters that are super impactful and I really want you to experience that for yourself. But yeah, the movie really does a great job of making you feel for the characters, really all of the human characters, but especially the main lead. He is specifically tormented and really broken in some ways. You know, this is a specifically post-World War II movie and he is a former soldier, so you can expect that he's suffering from some serious PTSD. And the way they write his character and his acting in particular is so strong. It really, again, grounds the movie in realism and in something that I I think a lot of us are probably too familiar with. Speaking of that, I also really appreciated the way that they kind of connect the main character's individual story with what's going on with Japan as a country at the time. Specifically, of course, at that time in history. So it's really just well written and a very interesting take. And for something that I know has been a gripe of a lot of lifelong Godzilla fans, especially over the past few years, I do feel like they do a great job balancing the human story with just the spectacle of, of course, having a giant lizard destroying cities. Speaking of that giant lizard though, Godzilla in this movie is absolutely terrifying. When he shows up, you just have a sense of dread, and honestly, it feels like there is nothing that the humans can do to stop him. I also dig the style of Godzilla that they went with in this movie, both visually, but also his personality. He's not just mindlessly wreaking havoc and walking through cities. He is specifically pissed with humans and almost vindictive in the way that he acts, which to me makes him even more horrifying. Oh, and one last thing I'll mention in my pros, and again, no spoilers at all. As you would imagine in a Godzilla movie, the humans are going to try 
try to come up with a plan to get rid of him. And I thought it was a genuinely interesting idea. It was a really clever way of trying to deal with a monster of that size, specifically when you're limited by the technology and the weaponry that's available to you. I mean, if this is the kind of quality that we're going to get, I can't wait to see what else they do with Godzilla in the future. So yeah, the movie rocks and there is a ton to love about it. But it's not all rainbows and sunshine. There are some things that didn't quite work for me and that might not work for you at all. So let's get into that with the cons. But before we do, I want to let you know that this video is sponsored by you. That's right. I'm just a tiny little channel here without any big corporate sponsors or anything like that. So just by watching the video, you're really helping me out. If you want to be super dope though, and show your support in the easiest possible way, do me a solid and just click that little thumbs up button below the video and maybe leave a comment. What are your favorite Godzilla movies so far? And what do you think about the American versions compared to the Japanese? You can also now join as a channel member if you want to help support me financially or just subscribe for free if you want to keep up to speed on all the new big movies that are coming out in theaters and on streaming. So either way, whatever you do, I appreciate it. All right, back to the cons. First is, of course, the giant elephant in the room, or I guess the giant lizard monster in the room. And that is, of course, the budget. We know that the budget for this movie is relatively pretty slim. And although I'm generally pretty shocked with what they were able to do with that limited budget, it does show in some ways. Don't get me wrong, there are plenty of shots where Godzilla looks incredible, like something out of a $200 million movie. But then there are some shots where he looks like something out of a straight to DVD creature feature that you would have picked up in Blockbuster back in the day. I mean, it is what it is. There's only so much you can do with that level of funding, I guess. Another thing that might be viewed as a negative, although it's not really for me personally, is the acting. Now again, I don't have a problem with it at all, really. But something you have to understand going into it is that this is a Japanese produced, written, directed, and starring movie. And there is a particular style of acting that we get in Japanese movies that doesn't exactly match up with Hollywood and with the style that we see in a lot of Western movies. So if you're not already familiar with Japanese movies or even anime for that matter, you might not be familiar or comfortable with the little bit of more over-the-top acting that you get in those kind of things. Or aside from that, you may just not be connected with Japanese history and culture. It might not be something that you're used to or that you fully understand. And look, that's fine. That's part of the beauty of having diversity in cinema. You get to see the world from a perspective and a frame of reference that you might not be familiar with. I just threw it in the cons section because I know that it might be something that people have a difficult time with. So, all right, enough of that. Who do I think Godzilla minus one is for? Well, look, I am not super well versed, of course, in the Godzilla lore. But what I do know, and from what I was able to gather with this movie, I think diehard Godzilla fans are absolutely going to love this movie. At least I hope they do. Otherwise, if you consider yourself interested in Godzilla or just giant monster movies in general, but maybe the more recent American made movies haven't done it for you. This might be the one. Also, if you just like to watch movies where things get blowed up real good, no oh boy, there is a lot to love here. And honestly, more than just that, giant monster aside, if you want to watch a movie where you can explore the emotions of a war veteran who's suffering from shame and regret and PTSD and get into the insight of what life might have been like for somebody living in Japan post-World War II, this might be worth checking out. As far as who it's not for, that's kind of tough. I genuinely feel like there's something to get out of this movie for just about anyone. But I suppose if you just don't care for giant monsters at all and you just can't see beyond that, or if you hate watching foreign language films and having to read subtitles, I mean, I wish you would give this one a shot, but if you're not really willing to open yourself up to it, then this one is probably not going to be for you either. Of course, these are just my thoughts and opinions. Either way, if Godzilla Minus One sounds interesting to you, check it out in theaters this weekend. If you've already seen the movie, let me know what you think in the comments below. And if not, what's your favorite Godzilla movie of all time? Now that I've watched my first Japanese Godzilla movie, I definitely want to dive into some of the others. So give me your recommendations in the comments below. But yeah, for me at this point, Godzilla Minus One might just be my number one. And of course, if you just want to keep up to speed on all the new big movies that are coming out in theaters and on streaming, Make sure you subscribe. All right, my dude. I'll catch you in the next one. Be good.